we have the standard form of a quadratic equation and the factored form of a quadratic equation here that we need to dissect. Um, let's talk about the first equation. I have the a value is 1, the b value is negative 2, the c value is negative 8. Remember, the c value is always the y-intercept. So you will see the parabola. And let me show you what that looks like real quick if I have one graph. Here we go. The parabola will cross the y-axis at negative 8, as it has done right here. Okay? So let's go back and now talk about factored form. The factored form of a quadratic equation gives you the factors that you use to find the roots. <coughs> Excuse me. So this factor x minus 4 has a root and that root is 4 because you set this equal to 0 and you solve for x. You set the other factor equal to 0 and you solve for x. 4 and negative 2 will be the roots the zeros, the x-intercepts, the solutions to the quadratic equation. Meaning, oh look at this, I know the x when y is 0. So watch me rewrite this, hold on. I didn't really want to write on this as I was presenting, but let me write this on here. Put my 0 in, I'm sorry that's a little messy. Look what I'm doing. I'm putting the y value as 0. So what do you think is going to go in these spots? The x value. And just to prove it real quick, 4 squared, that's 16. 2 times 4. Look at that. Minus 8 is what? 8. Take 8 more away. And what do you have? 0. So the x-intercepts would be the x value when y is 0, which is the same thing as saying where it sits on the, let's go look, oh, x-axis. So don't forget this piece because sometimes you'll see questions um, on the star test that put a 0 in the y spot. When it does that, it wants you to give the x values. Now, how do we find those x values? If you don't have the factors, you have to first find those factors. And in most cases, it will be factorable. So let's go back and look and see how we did that. You take the A value from your standard form or from the trinomial, the expression on the right side of the equal sign of your quadratic equation. You take your C value, multiply them, and at the top you have negative 8. Bottom, you put the number that you're going to add to, which is the number in the middle, negative 2. So now we need factors. Two numbers that will multiply to negative 8 that will also add to negative 2. How do we do that? A um, couple of things. You could do it by hand and write them all down, or you could go to the calculator. I'll move this over. Hold on. Go to the calculator and type in negative 8 divided by x into the y equals screen in y1. Then look at the table and find the two numbers that will add to the negative to the bottom number. And for this problem, it's x minus 4 and x plus 2. Well, I kind of added a little more to that. For this problem, it's negative 4 and positive 2. But I go ahead and write it in factor form because I know the x goes first. And we've already gone over that, so this is review for you. And for those that need a better explanation as to why the X goes first, go ahead and inbox me and I'll explain it. But for those that are preparing for the star test, and you already know this because I've taught this thus far, um, I'm going to move ahead for you. So now I've written this in factored form. I know that A is 1 and A will always sit here right in front of your factors. One more time, A is always right here in front of your factors when you're writing it in factored form. When you're writing your quadratic equation in factored form, there's your A. And I told you it was 1, so I can go ahead and write 1. Now if you don't see that there, what do you know? A is 1. Let's talk about the vertex. 
This is the axis of symmetry and the minimax value. So something new, the axis of symmetry formula, negative b over 2a. Now that means write the negative first and then write the b value. So I have two negatives here because then this negative came with the formula. This negative came with the value of b, see? Now put it over to a. a was 1. So this is a positive 2 over 2. So that means my axis of symmetry is 1. So when I'm writing my vertex, I will put 1 here. Now let's find the minimum or maximum value. Take your x, plug it into your equation. and solve for y. Now I know the y value. Now yes you can plug it into the factor form. I didn't show that here and I don't want to write it because it would mess up uh, how pretty <laughs> the um, um, paper is that I've prepared for you. Nonetheless you can try it and see if you get negative 9 by plugging 1 here, here and here. Okay. Now let's take all the information we have and graph. So I have my zeros, negative 2, my 0, 4. I have my um, y-intercept is negative 8. I have my vertex is 1, negative 9. So I can draw my parabola. And since my vertex is down here, that means I have a minimum. It's looking up at the roots. This is one away, so then this one on this side would also be one away from the axis of symmetry. If this is cutting it down the middle, then the distance here should be the same as the distance here. Yeah, it's equal distance. Yeah, and then look here. Or equal distance, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, from the axis of symmetry here, I am how far away? One, two, three. And then from this side, I am what? One, two, three away. Yeah, the distance is the same equal distant. Oh, so it's the middle. Okay, so now we have the roots, the zeros, the x-intercepts, the solutions. They are graphed. We have the y-intercept on the y-axis. Negative 8 came from the C spot of the standard form of the quadratic equation. Mm -hmm. We have the vertex here, 1, negative 9. And now we have another point, which is only 1 away from the axis of symmetry, just as 0, negative 8 is what? 1 away. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about something that will help us remember when we have a minimum versus a maximum. Well, you notice how the parabola is pointing up. Why do you think that is? Well, A is positive. A is what? Positive. So when A is positive, my parabola points up. Let's find the domain and range to review. The domain would be all real numbers. You won't see this symbol on the star test, but you will see it later on in math. In algebra two, you'll see this notation from negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, but on the star test, you will, um, for the domain of the functions that we have that have no restrictions, you'll see all real numbers that, um, that play of words. Let's talk about the range. The range is at negative 9, or it starts, excuse me, at negative 9, and the graph is pointing which way? Up. So y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 9. Now I know some of you are saying, well, I know that it's reaching all the way up to infinity, and it started at negative 9. So some of you have been taught negative 9 less than or equal to x, or excuse me, y, because we're talking about range, which is less than positive infinity. 
There's nothing wrong with that notation that gets you ready for Algebra 2. However, on the STAR test, they're going to stick with this notation, y is greater than or equal to negative 9, which is a little harder to um, come up with. So make sure you practice writing it in this form. These are the same, but this is the one you're going to see in a couple of months here. Um, you could also write out your range as all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 9, just so you know. Okay, we're done with that example. Let's look at the next one. Okay, um, y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. This is the standard form of a quadratic equation. I need to factor that. And when I say factor it, I'm speaking of the expression sitting on the right side. So I noticed that x squared has a negative sign on it. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. When I do that, I'm dividing negative 1 from each term. You notice how the sign changes? Perfect. So now there's a 1 here, two, negative 2 here, and negative 8. And this factored form is what I'm going to use to find my factors because I factored it. Now, I cannot um, take anything from, and when I say take, I mean divide anything else from each term. So I am done with the number, finding what goes in front of the parentheses, meaning identifying or uh, figuring out what the GCF is. So I cannot divide any more from each term. Therefore, negative 1 is the GCF. That's the final GCF. So let's factor it. And let's use this form, not my original. Use the factored form to factor. So um, I need to write down my a, b, and c values because these values up here refer to the original form. So let's go ahead and write that on, on here. a equals 1, a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 8. So now a times c is negative 8, put 2 at the bottom. We go ahead and put that um, into the y equals screen. So we would put negative 8 divided by x, just as we talked about on the last problem. Because all I did was put a negative sign um, as the GCF and multiplied that to each term to change the problem. And I wanted to show you the difference between having x squared minus 2x minus 8 as the original and look at that, negative x squared plus 2x plus 8 as the original. So we'll see here in a moment. And let me move a few of my papers out of the way so that we're only looking at one sheet at a time. So now, I know that negative 4 and positive 2 will add to mm, a negative 2. How do we know that? We put the b value here. This is b. That's b. We put a times c at the top. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. Negative 4 plus positive 2 is negative 2. I found my two factors. Now go ahead and write x minus 4, then x plus 2. Mm -hmm. Now I know my factored form is going to have x minus 4 and x plus 2 as the factors, but I need my a value. And the a value in this problem was my GCF, negative 1. Look at that. Okay, so now let's talk about the vertex. I want to find the vertex. So remember, you need this formula in order to find the axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. So we're done factoring. Let's go back to the original form. And b for this problem is positive 2, but the formula comes with a negative. So write the negative, write parentheses, and then put in the value of 2. 
divided by two parentheses negative one because that's the a value. Multiply you get negative two. Multiply you get negative two. The axis of symmetry is not zero. That's one. Now I'll take the one and put that one inside of the original equation. Now place, replace this x with the axis of symmetry, replace this x with the axis of symmetry because the axis of symmetry is an x value, so x equals 1. Now square the 1, that's 1, now bring down the negative because the negative is on the outside. That's 2 times 1 which is 2, then 8, so this becomes 9, not negative 9 on the last one because now we have a maximum value. I wonder why. A is negative. So when A is negative, the parabola points down. That's what it means to have a maximum. Some people think maximum means to look up, but no, maximum means for the parabola to look down, that it has a top. This is the highest that it can go. See what I'm pointing at? Oh. So now let's see if we have graphed everything else. Um, the y-intercept is 8. Let's go check. Yes, it is. C is 8. This is 1 away, so 1 away, equal distant. Yes, from the axis of symmetry. Okay, now, I need the roots. I have negative 2 and 4. Where did that come from? Oh, yeah, my factors. So x minus 4 equals 0. I added 4 to both sides, and now I have a positive 4 instead of a negative 4. So a positive 4 instead of a negative 4 down here. Y'all see that? So if this says negative 2, then what was its factor? x minus 2 or x plus 2? Hopefully you're saying x plus 2, which means this factor was x minus 4 or x plus 4 because this one is positive. x minus 4. Awesome. So now we have our rocks, our roots, our zeros, our x-intercepts our solutions to the quadratic equation. Again, this is the maximum value 9. This is the axis of symmetry 1, so our vertex is 1, 9. The domain and range would be all real numbers. The domain is all real numbers. Vertical lines um, will go through the, I'm sorry, vertical lines will go through the graph how many times? An infinite amount. Why? Because they're arrows on both sides. So if I drew a vertical line here, will it go through this graph? Of course, because there's an arrow and they will eventually meet. So is there any vertical line that will not eventually touch this graph? No. So how many vertical lines touch it? All of them. <laughs> All real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative infinities over here, positive infinities over here. Now, now let's talk about the range. Why is less than or equal to 9? What does that mean? It started at 9. My horizontal line, meaning my ladder step, and those steps are doing what? They're falling. So how many horizontal lines will actually pass through the graph? All of them that start from where? 9. Good job. So y is less than or equal to 9. All real numbers less than or equal to 9. Remember, um, on the star test, you may see all real numbers added in with the range for quadratic equations. So they may write it in words. I don't want you to veer away from this answer because you see the words all real numbers and you remember that the domain was all real numbers. So keep that in mind. They may put all real numbers less than or equal to 9. This phrase means the same thing as this inequality. Okay, now real quick, let's just make a small comparison. 
do you see that even though these were two examples, one with a negative, one without, that they still both have the same roots? Negative 2, 4, negative 2, 4. But this one had a positive A. This one had a negative A. Look at that. Positive A, negative 2, 4. Negative A, pos uh, negative 2, positive 4. Same roots, but the parabola turned in different directions. Now, real quick, take a look at what I started with. This is the minimum because A is positive. This one was the maximum because A, yeah, it's negative. Okay, we're going to stop this video and then on the next one, we'll start going over how to plug things into the vertex formula and write the vertex form of a quadratic equation.